the key for privacy and security is to educate people. This takes some time. And for me, the interesting question is, how close are we to systematic failure in some of these systems? This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, navigating the internet. Is your privacy protected? Education, business, and even seismic social change are all more accessible and immediate due to the internet. But every day, as millions of transactions take place in every corner of the world, private data and civil liberties are at risk. Alan Friedman examines the issues of privacy and security on the web, saying protecting them presents new challenges in this ever-expanding digital age. Alan, when talking about sharing information online, there are two things that go hand in hand, and they are privacy and trust. Explain that. Privacy is important because it is about consumer trust. It is about online user trust. If people don't feel comfortable sharing their information and leaving their information, then the entire information economy collapses, or at least a certain sector of it does. Well, how can Internet users trust that their privacy is being protected? American privacy laws usually, uh, or the policy, has been built on this principle of notice and consent. That when I interact with a system, if they're storing sensitive information, if they're collecting certain sensitive information, I need to have notice and I need to consent. I need to buy into it. The challenge, of course, is how do you build systems where we have a myriad of different ways of interacting. We're giving information, we're taking information. We don't want to interrupt this entire process and say, oh, by the way, are you okay with this? That doesn't lend itself to successful commercial transactions. Well, Alan, what's the government's role? How does the government keep our information safe? It ranges from internal management. Uh, if certain law enforcement agencies are being a little over eager in how they're going to collect data, uh, the government can step in and, and, and regulate that and build processes to prevent that. Uh, if companies are behaving unfairly, the Federal Trade Commission has been a key source of uh, watching out for privacy and security issues. And then, of course, you have individual statutes that come with their own enforcement uh, approaches. So uh, the educational department has its own uh, enforcement provisions. The healthcare laws have their own enforcement provisions of what happens if people don't actually safeguard privacy. And what about the private sector? What can it do to keep information safe? This is a very open question. So, and it very much depends on how we look at data. And there are a few different perspectives. One can say, listen, my data is my property, and I should get something for it. Now, the response to that is a lot of the stuff we get on the web right now, we get for free in exchange for data. What we don't have is an open market for communicating this transaction. We do perhaps don't have enough transparency so that people are aware of how their data is being shaped and circulated. Uh, and some companies have gotten in this game and said, listen, here's what we collect about you. Here's what we might do with it. But here is what we think you get from it. And we are going to try to convince you to let us collect this information and use this information because we can serve you better if we have this information. Another approach just says, listen, if I'm interacting with a website, uh, that website has a right to whatever it can glean. And this is the very libertarian perspective. If people are really upset, they will leave, they will exit the market. If privacy is really important, people will provide it. The problem with this approach is that while we have privacy concerns, we also have other concerns. And it is, I think, unfair to say if people aren't allowing privacy to be the main reason they make their decisions we should pretend there is no privacy issue. And there's a bit of a dichotomy there. Too much privacy, not enough privacy. So how much privacy is too much privacy? If you use the standard policies, the standard approach of social calculus of saying costs versus benefits, you can say, listen, the data is already collected. And if we only let this one other person use this data to f stop this social ill, what's the problem? And see how we actually get a legitimate slippery slope argument that says once you collect the data, people will come up with good reasons to use it, and it's very hard to make a utility-based objection to using for any one instance until you have a huge row of instances and everyone is sharing data. And that's the challenge of avoiding. How do we allow data to be used for very specific reasons, having some amount of break glass 
provision. And often that comes down to really good institutional controls, saying, listen, you can use this data, but we're going to put a fairly high burden on you to demonstrate that you are not misusing this data. And we need to have very clear time horizons about how this is going to be. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.